It is actually, we are living in the age of the second coming of the feminine principle, symbolized by Magdalene and some other uh, archetypes as well. I've been working with this archetype for many, many years, and actually, uh, it's, to me, it started in the beginning of the 80s when, while I was reading the Gospel of Thomas and the Gospel of Mary the Magdalene and the Gospel of Philip. You should imagine, at that time, I've been very much into the Jeshua, Jesus, and was awaiting a new translation of the so-called Nag Hammadi scriptures, the Gospel of Thomas and so forth. And it was while I was reading that, sitting there in my chair, uh, go, going through the Gospel of, of uh, Philip, that I read these lines that you might know already. Mary the Madeline was the disciple that Jesus loved the most and often kissed on the... You know, because every time there, were, there is a word in the old scriptures that cannot be read or translated, they just put in brackets. So, after coming over the shock of Jesus kissing a woman often, I had to find out on which part of the body <laughs> he had kissed her, you know, of course. Yeah. And um, you, would, you should also uh, keep in mind that this sentence also inspired other uh, uh, searchers and writers. Uh, for example, Henry Lincoln, who wrote a book inspired by that. And all the speculation about Jesus and Mary the Magdalene being married and having kids and everything, that this has been going on for years, you know, and this is really something that a lot of people are into. Were they married? And, and let me say now, yes, they were. And you don't have to speculate, you know, because you can just collect all the dots from all the scriptures and wherever you can, you can research these things. And if you connect the dots, there's the picture. And it's a very clear picture, indeed. And I also had the luck at that time that I was uh, studying the Aramaic language, the language of Jesus and Mary the Magdalene and their times. And if you haven't heard me say it before, I need to really say it now because the Aramaic language is the key not only to the New Testament, but the key to the mystery tradition of the Magdalene and the Nazarene Jesus. So, um, just to cut everything short, let me um, uh, rephrase some words from an old Aramaic gospel. And this is Jesus talking. So, it, is, it says it all. It goes like this, I and my bride are one, exactly as Mary the Magdalene, whom I have chosen to myself as an example, is one with me. I and my bride are one, exactly as Mary the Magdalene, whom I have chosen for myself as an example, is one with me. These are very important words. In fact, he says everything there. He is diverting, he, he's, uh, there, he's talking about a bride on one side and Mary Magdalene on the other side. And bride in, in Aramaic, kalta, really means, of course it means bride, but it, means, it can mean also bride on a, another level. You know, if you say, like Jung, the, um, the feminine principle within, inside the man, inside masculine. The, what is it called, the Jung uh, expression for that? Come on, you... Animus or animus or something? A, an, a, a, an, anima. The anima. <laughs> the anima, yes. And um, so what Yeshua is really saying is that on one side, I have found the anima, the feminine principle within me. And in that principle, I have seen mirrored by an earthly woman in the Mary the Magdalene. And that is why I have chosen her as a teacher to me. Yes? So, um, there's another thing I would like you to, to give a, th uh, a thought. Have you ever thought about Christianity? 
the name of the religion that most of us are born into, we are baptized, we are confirmated, we are all may, all, also maybe married and everything in the church. But have you ever stopped and given a thought to what is the meaning of that expression of that name? Christianity, it comes from Christ, the Greek Christ, which means the, the anointed one. Exactly as in Hebrew or Aramaic, Messiah means the anointed one. So, we, you could say that our religion is really named the, the anointing party. Yes? And if you read the anointing party's uh, book, the New Testament, open it, you can see that uh, in two uh, circumstances a prostitute are anointing our hero, Jesus. So, this anointing ritual must be the most important in a in, in a um, in a religion who have taken the name after it. Won't you agree? Mm -hmm. Tell me when did, have you ever heard anybody in the church preach about exactly that? Never. And that is exactly what this is all about. If you go into the New Testament you can read about Jesus talking about the bridal chamber. The bridal chamber, what is that all about? The bride and the groom must go into the to the um, bridal chamber and merge. And to this day, if you go down to Israel, you will hear the rabbis tell their congregation to the married couples of their congregation to go into the bridal chamber and mate as, as uh, often as possible. Why? Because they know that when a man and a woman are merging into the, the bridal chamber, they will manifest the Shekinah in the bridal chamber. Manifesting the Shekinah is the feminine principle of God. Yes? So there is a purpose of going into the bridal chamber. In the Western world, you know, we have sex here, there and everywhere, and a lot of people don't have any sex, you know. And everybody is frustrated about it, and everybody is talking about it. Everybody is reading books about it, and nobody knows a damn thing about what to do with it. You know, what's the, what is the secret of it? And if we had a, if those in the Christian church have known about these things, we would have known also many years ago. But nobody seemed to know. And do you know why? Because if you remember. The day when the Mary the Magdalene came to the other disciples and said, Hey friends, I have good news to you. I have just been to his grave and I saw my beloved raising from the dead in a vision. He's still here, but he's on another level. And they're about to kill her. Simon Peter, he would rather see the back of her. And from that moment, and until 325 years later, when the church is established, there is an, what you would call a character murder going on towards her, Mary the Magdalene. And she's from, be, from being a moon priestess, she's slowly become a simple prostitute and ends up as a whore. So when they established the church in 325, from that moment on, they split man in two. Everything beneath the belt was sin and guilt and, you know, because the moon priestess was not there anymore. And you should remember at that time, Mary, uh, Mother Mary didn't really play any role in, in the congregation, uh, in the mind of people. So in 400, I don't remember exactly when, but I think 410, the people wanted their feminine principle back in the church. So the church father went into a plenum and they were, oh, what, 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 what can we find out? And one of them came up with this brilliant idea, the mother of the Savior. And they took Mary, put her up on a pedestal, and she had been there working and had done a marvelous job ever since. I mean, millions of people every day get help from this archetype. She uh, she's uh, showing herself in apparitions and stuff like that, but something is missing, 
and that is why in during history the concept of the prostitute and the Madonna was invented because you had the prostitute or you had the, the Madonna at one side but you were this was pornography and this is pornography to this day still because nobody knows anything about it and this is what Mary the Magdalene is really all about this is her second coming and this is about not so much about were they married, married, did they have, is there a bloodline, how many children did they have, forget all about it. This is something that, the, there are so many people who are married and so many people have kids, it's not interesting. You know? What is interesting is what did they want to tell us, what, what, what kind of wisdom did they wish to, 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 to give us. And it's all about the bridal chamber. Um, yes. that when we open the New Testament and we, we, we read that Mary the Magdalene is the one who is anointing him, you should know that due to the, to the Jewish um, um, laws, it is not permitted for somebody to anoint somebody if they are not, this person are not equal to the one being anointed. So if she was a prostitute, he must have been a thief. But we know that he was Yeshua the Nazarene, which means Jesus the initiated. So of course, Mary the Magdalene was also a, uh, initiated. And if we look at where she could have had her education, there's no doubt that that must have been by, with the therapists in uh, Alexandria near Lake Matiotis. And we know that because there is a Jewish philosopher, um, Philon, who have written a beautiful piece about their uh, whereabouts and their customs and everything. And there we can read. And this was the only place in the Middle East where a woman could go in in equality with a man and get a holistic education. And you should remember this is about prophecy, astrology, healing, and so forth, you know, the whole package, what you would call a real holistic education. And after that, that was uh, groomed with her initiation as a moon priestess. And from there, she got her initiation name, the Magdalene. And the Magdal means the exalted one, the one who is up there hovering and looking out for her flock. So she's really in, 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 in a highly capable and initiated uh, person on equal footing with Yeshua. And that is why he can say, I and my bride are one, exactly as Mary the Magdalene, whom I have chosen to myself as an example, is one with me. So you don't have to speculate. You can just take all the dots, connect them, from the scriptures, and there's so much more to go by. For example, you should also imagine that he was the teacher of the male um, uh, students, and she was, of course, for the female students. And in Pisti Sophia, we can read uh, there's a, a situation where Yeshua is sitting on the mountain, and all the male disciples are sitting there asking him questions. And out of 125 questions from these students, 80 times he turned around towards Mary, who was sitting beside him, just sitting, waiting for him to finish his job, and said, Mary, please, could you answer? And a lot of scholars have said, oh, Jeshu was a great man, he really wanted to promote women. None of them could think that maybe he chose her to answer because she could offer a much better answer than he could. Or he wanted a feminine perspective on the questions. And at one time, it gets too much for Peter, Simon Peter. He, master, you must, now you must close the mouth of this crazy woman so we can also have a word. 
and of course he said, stay away, Satan, uh, go away, Jesus says. So this is just another example how um, how much he revered her and he loved her and knew who sh who she was. And when she, uh, after she had been uh, she had been um, anointing him uh, the second time. He says the, word, uh, the, the, the famous words in the New Testament, For this she shall be remembered forever. For this she shall be. But this is unfortunately not what most people remember her for. They remember her as the, the prostitute from whom he drew out seven deadly sins. And if you go into the Aramaic uh, language, you can see and read and understand that what he really did to her was opening the seven heavens in her. He put on her the robe of glory in that way. You could see the whole Christmas tree was enlightened, you know. Everything was opened up. So they were each other's teachers on different levels. Um, I would really suggest that if you want to go into and learn more about the, the mystery tradition of Yeshua and also Mary Magdalene, get hold of a copy of the Gospel of Philip. And actually I can see that over here Watkins have uh, a small, very, very nice book with a lot of, yeah, it is here. Um, and I should be promoting my own books, but uh, and now I'm promoting this one. And you can actually, in this little uh, volume, you get uh, the Fable of the Pearl, the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Mary, the Magdalene, Melchizedek, the Gospel of Philip, and so forth. Also the Hermit Scriptures. And the good thing about, I love small books, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not doing small books myself, <laughs> but I, I promise you to do it in the future, you know, because it, it, it is really nice to... <laughs> and you can go and you can have it and bring it everywhere. It's really a cool book. And um, there, I saw there were so many more of them over there. Um, but get a hold, uh, especially the Gospel of Philip. It is cryptic in places, but it gives uh, a lot of room for meditation and for contemplation. And um, maybe, it, I, I'm sure that by reading it and contemplating it, it opens up to inner uh, states also of uh, consciousness. So it's it's really right. I promise you know to 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 try to to make a, a really compromised uh, idea of it you know because I'm I'm not so fond of uh, of too much speculation you know because you know after my book came out in Denmark in 2003 I think it was I mean I was approached by more than hundred women who th who thought that they were a direct incarnation of Mary the Magdalene. <laughs> And in the beginning, I didn't understand that, you know. I thought, oh, that's another one, okay. <laughs> but um, later on, I understood that this is something, because there was many Magdalene's, you should remember there were many Magdalene's. Sarah the Magdalene, Joan the Magdalene, Judith the Magdalene, and so forth. It was an initiation name of, of a lineage, lineage that uh, went straight back to oldest times. And uh, so it makes perfect sense that it, you know, it was it, as when, while I was writing my book, I started uh, doing that already in 1999, uh, started to do a lot of, uh, get things together in order to finish the book. Uh, and I thought I was the only one in the whole wide world who was about to write about this and had this brilliant idea about writing a book one. And then suddenly one day, a woman from uh, from America phoned me up in Denmark and asked if I if she could have she could come and uh, have a, a, a sitting there. And I said, oh, yeah, of course. It seemed that she had uh, a, a friend in uh, in Jutland where I also live, and this woman, her friend in Jutland, knew that I was writing a book. She was one of my clients, you know. So now this woman comes into to my study and uh, tells a very fascinating story. Three years ago she was in a car accident in in United States, and she happened to to come uh, to go into a coma for one week. And when she woke up, 
uh, there was a woman standing beside her bed. And she thought that this woman was Mary Magdalene. And she knew that this woman had saved her from, from, from this. And, and, and But the problem was she didn't really know who Mary the Magdalene was. So luckily for her, there was a nurse working there who was very uh, religious, who uh, told her about Mary the Magdalene. This woman, she got a lot of money from, from this accident. You know, in the States, you can be a millionaire for... So she decided she wanted to travel around the world in order to seek, meet people who knew anything about Mary. And that had brought her to, to me three years later. And now this lady comes in and tells me that people all over the world are really working with Mary the Magdalene. They're doing plays and poetry and everything, you know. <sighs> Christ! <laughs> so after, you know, a, a bit of frustration, it really dawned on me that this was something that was happening on a collective plane, and there was a meaning to it, a deep, deep meaning. And slowly, slowly understood that this is the second coming of this principle in order to heal everything beneath the belt. Because you should also understand this, because this is very es esoteric uh, knowledge that I I'm going to tell you now. So you need to, to really be, you know, if you remember in the New Testament, there is some words of Jesus saying this, be wise as, a ser as serpents and innocents as doves, in the same way as Moses raised the serpent in the desert, the Son of Man must be raised. What you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What, shall, what you loosen up in, on earth shall be loosened in heaven. What is that all about? You know, the serpent within the Christian uh, terminology is really Satan. So be wise as Satan and innocent sense of stuff that doesn't make any sense. So the next question is, what, what kind of serpent did Moses raise in the desert? Strange. Until you take the Aramaic approach, then you know that when you go out into the desert, you're completely exposed to God. There's nowhere you can hide. So going into the desert is really getting rid of all the noise that we are carrying around each and one of us. And this is, of course, something you, you, have, you can only do when you know how to do it. You have to go into, at the time of Jesus, you need to meet a very holy man like him, or John the Baptist, or go into the Essene Mystery School, or whatever. But, so what we are talking about is raising of the Kundalini. And the Kundalini is connected to the second heaven, the sacral chakra, which is the chakra of the Magdalene par excellence. So you could say the dove, and you could say uh, the Holy Spirit, and you could say Agave, and you could say Mother Mary, and you could say Serpent, you are down here, and you, you could say Wisdom, and you could say Eros, and you could say Mary the Magdalene. And when you, you know, for many, many years now, a lot of people in different New Age spirituality have been working with the third eye and with the crown and with the heart and so forth, but n nothing hit down here, you know. So this is actually like, you know, if you Imagine you want to build a house and you start with the chimney. You need, of course, to start with the basic thing. And especially in our times, because I believe that our uh, generations are really suffering from a lot of different uh, things here that needs to be healed. And this is that is why the Magdalene is also important. This is something that belongs to the whole idea and knowledge about the bridal chamber and the merging of the masculine and the feminine. Because this is what it's all about. 
forget about the, the crucifixion and everything. This is also a story within Christianity that have some that we must uh, pay attention to. But the most important thing is the bridal chamber and the merging of the masculine and the feminine. Really. So, what it says is also when you go deep into the scriptures is that the masculine and the feminine must be equal. They must work on equal footing. They must be in equal respect for each other. Maybe you don't have to understand. Maybe you don't. Maybe the masculine don't have to understand the 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 feminine, and maybe the feminine don't have to understand the masculine. But they need to respect each other, despite anything. So, um, to work on equal footing is also to have the 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 gods. If you have a partner, to open up and invite the other one in into the holiest of the holiest and share with them everything that needs to be healed. Because I, I believe also that if you have a good partner, that partner exactly as the bride that, that uh, uh, Yeshua is talking about is the mirror in which, the magic mirror in which we can see ourselves. And this is something that we need in order to heal all the, the wounds we are carrying. If you are on your own, of course, there's no problem in working with these things also. Because this is something that they did in the mystery traditions. They knew exactly how. And there's, there's a very, very important thing to, to also remember there. That is that human, the humans, uh, what do you call it? Um, our, our, you know, we can visualize, you know, visualize mm -hmm. things, you know, mm -hmm. and this is a very, very important tool when you will, when you work. For example, if you are a male and you are working on your own, you can visualize the Magdalene or whoever, uh, whatever archetype, and you can really make uh, different kinds of uh, training with her with the breath and heart to heart and you, the females can do the same find uh, a Jeshua archetype or whatever and make uh, emerging in that way it's all in some of my books and you can read it about it there also so I think the 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 thing that is um, that is uh, a real challenge to us today, and I meet that everywhere in the Western world. Stamina. Just stamina. The stamina. 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 To to keep on doing it, you know, every day. And you should remember that in Aramaic, there's no word for sin, really. There is no word for sin. If you are, if you talk about sin, you really means to miss the mark. If you're not present, you cannot succeed. So instead of sitting maybe for an hour every day and try to get hold on everything, it's much better to just sit down for 10 minutes and be present in those 10 minutes. It's all about intent. It's all about why am I doing this? Yes, it's not so much about how do I do this. Because a lot of th times people they say, I don't know how to do it. And then they are just off, you know. No, why should I do it? That's the most important thing. Because everybody can sit down and just shut up, you know. Get rid of the phones and close down everything and just sit. You know, the seer, my teacher, he didn't meditate. But he sat every day for one hour without doing anything, just letting the dust fall to the ground. And I, at one time I said, oh, uh, tomorrow we must remember to put in the chairs for, for meditation. Meditation, he said, we don't meditate. <laughs> okay, we, uh, we sit, okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you call it. And you don't need to read books about it. Just sit down and be quiet. And if you want to, for example, uh, connect to 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 an archetype like the Magdalene, visualize and just do it. 
It's no big thing. It's something that we have done since we were children. Now we have just forgotten about it. So we, we got all the tools already. Now we just not, n need to know why should I do this? Because I'll benefit from it. Things will start to open up like a flower with inside. See your own heart as that flower that will open up and blossom and bloom. This is what Yeshua is really talking about when he says in the New Testament, you should not go out in the public and stand and, and promote your prayers. Go into your inner chamber, into the bridal chamber, and unite with the source there. And actually, the inner chamber is that flower of that is forever. There is a, a flame of eternity that burns forever there. And you connect there. Take any question you have, take it within you, lay it forward, and you'll get the answer. And when you're finished, when you've got the answer, or whatever you need, you give, you, you show your gratitude, you say thanks, and then you step out slowly again. Every, anybody can do it. It's just about, are we doing it? Yes. Do you have any questions? Uh, uh, you are very welcome to, to, to come forward, because questions are very good. Um, because there, there will be a lot of things that I, I, I would like to share with you, but you know the time is limited. Mm -hmm. So, if use this opportunity and come forward with some questions, that would be very, very good. Isn't there anything that you have been wondering about, about the Magdalene or something that you thought would, would be be nice to hear about uh, what is the perspective of this or that. Um, yes? So, um, you mentioned about the second coming. Yes. Um, do you think the purpose of that is to exonerate? To, to exonerate, to clear her name, or is it more than the second comment yeah. is uh, that's what I'm about to do. If you say if if the second comment is about clearing her name, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's more to establish what have always been there, but now clearing it out so it's so everybody can understand. You should also understand that when the the original Aramaic texts were were um, translated into Greek, those who translated it might not have known the, the secret of the Aramaic language because uh, every phrase or word in Aramaic can have seven, eight, nine, ten different meanings and they can be in each direction but you need to, to take them all into consideration. And if you don't know that, how on earth do you know what to, to pick? How, which one of them? So in that respect, there's so many things that have been just... And these things, because to me, everything is in the New Testament, really. The knowledge is there. It's just that there are so many misunderstandings and stuff like that. So that is really what she is all about, I think. It, it, gi it gives us an opportunity to go back and rewrite the whole thing and see Wow, it's there. It's it, actually it's a tantric, uh, it's a tantric message. I don't know. What? Oh, sorry. Regarding the Magdalene archetype, obviously there are many hundreds of women that believe genuinely, sincerely <laughs> that they are Mary Magdalene. Now, in my opinion, I feel that these women were at the Temple of Isis and they were high priestesses, mm -hmm. and they are here honouring Mary Magdalene. Of course. Um, they believe that they are, but I think it's more a case of they've borrowed that identity or taken a book from a library, so they have that imprint which makes them genuinely feel mm. that they are Mary Magdalene. They could be but Magdalene's. They could be a soul fragment. Yeah. And yeah. I just wondered if you had, you had any thoughts on, on that. Yeah, my, my thought is that uh, later on, as I said before, I understood that these women, of course, they maybe they have been Magdalene's from that tradition, you know? Exactly. No doubt about it. Yes? But do you believe that 
it's eight years old, it can... It can oh, no, 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 that's not what I'm talking about, no. of, of souls breaking up. No, no, no. no. I think that each of these women have had a, a background there. They were educated, maybe side by side by, by Miriam, you know. Mm. So they all got, you know, all the sisters got that uh, initiation name, the exalted one. <coughs> so maybe you were Joan, the exalted one, or Sarah, the exalted one. And I think that's why, because you know, remember what the education of Mary the Magdalene, if you were a Magdalene, you had exactly the same education. You went through exactly the same things. And you were as skilled at her. What makes, makes her apart from the others is that she was the consort of Yeshua, the Nazarene. And there was a purpose uh, that was also uh, political and religious and everything beyond uh, the initiation thing and stuff like that. So they played like royalty, you know. I think that why it is of such a huge importance today is because of the church uh, misinterpretations of all this. And we are carrying, if you look around, it is a pornographic a society on all levels, not only sexually, but on all kinds of levels, spiritual also. It's it's pornographic, you know. It's just a, a marketplace. Everything is becoming a marketplace, and so I think this is very important because when the two, when the minus and the plus, the yin and the yang, and the masculine and the feminine, are merging, they can move mountains. And I also believe that. There is some healing uh, tools that is being activated by that merging that cannot be activated in any other way. And I also believe that any of the rules of the Hermetic tradition must be taken into and we have to not only rediscover the old rules, we have to write them anew again for every generation and take them into our time. And I think we are living in the quickening, what we could call the quickening now. You know, at, at the time of Jesus and before that, and people that uh, were chosen for it or had the, the ability to it, you know, uh, they went into secrecy to have their initiations in the mystery traditions. Later on, people became nuns or monks, but these times are over. Now everything is available. If you know where to search, you can go and take any scripture you will and you could get inspiration for. So this is something that must be taken into the time that we are living in. And I think the quickening also means that we we need to we, we must not complicate things more. We have people humans have complicated these things far too much because there has been so many people who wanted to create a, what you would call a special special something for the for the chosen ones you know for the special ones you know and all this kind of stuff and i think that this is already being uh, initiated by Yeshua and that is one, one of the reasons why both uh, John the Baptist was executed and Jesus was executed they opened up to all the secrecy in the mystery schools and they were not supposed to it. There were so many people who opposed that. So it's already opened up, but the church closed it down again. So this is need to be healed and we need to understand that we should not complicate things anymore. We must really go out and do things now. It's not time for reading, really. I'm, I'm sorry to say we're standing here. <laughs> <laughs> but we should, of course we could read and we can read, but you are not getting any wiser by reading. You need to, it is like, for example, if you want to, like, uh, to, to learn to ride a bike, you don't go and see, learn to ride a bike, learn to, oh, there it is, no. You must go and bike on the bike yourself, you know. And then you can go and find out about the traffic, rules and this is what spirituality is all about but we need to ride the bike and my uh, my experience from riding a bike 
it can be inspirational for some, but it is actually your uh, experience uh, that counts for you. That healing, that the, that we are talking. You're t asking about uh, how are we going to heal the abuse and yeah. all the things that's going on. We need, I think, first of all, to understand that eros is so much connected to spirituality, and without that connection, there will be no healing. This is the only way. We, whatever we do, it doesn't matter if you're a striptease dancer or if you are a director of a big company. If whatever we are working with, we need to raise everything up on the next level now. And we need to connect it with spirituality. Remember that religion really comes from the Latin religare, which means to reconnect to the higher uh, spheres, you know, or to God, whatever. So this is really what we need to do, to reconnect again, in order to, or else there will be no healing. And you know, there's a lot of interest in tantric this and tantric that, and it's just, for many people, it's just an, another aphrodisium in, in sex lives that is dried out, you know. And if it, it doesn't, if it isn't taken up on a higher level, forget about it, it'll just be another wound that needs healing, you know. So, it is funny though that sexuality has been, and I think it's because we are just like children in that area, that it still is so fascinating that uh, we are behaving like uh, teenagers every time we go into that area. And we, we should understand that it, this is a very creative force that is activated when we go into it and, and know about it. But it takes a moon priestess and that tradition in order to understand it fully. And I hope that the Magdalene and her sisters will uh, help us to, to find out what that is all about. Yes? So you met, uh, we're at time at the moment. Um, maybe we could have uh, a last question and then if people got other questions... Of course, yes, we will. Out. Yes. It, it's a little different. It was I've read the, the other mm -hmm. in Syria. Yes. Where you saw the um, icon. Yeah. The I just wondered if you knew how those people were with all the problems in Syria. What, in, in if your, I knew where they were? If you knew if they were okay, that those sisters, now? yes. Oh, oh yeah, they are still there. They yes, are. they are. I was wondering. Yes, they are. And uh, Mirna this, uh, of Sufnia, you know the stigmatia, mm -hmm. the, the, the Mirna who, who, who bled from her, her finger, you know. She, she, she and her family fled to Canada, so they are safe there. But the sisters, I don't, I don't believe that Anybody yeah. dares to touch them? Thank they are you. very tough ladies, you know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, just imagine there are thousand sisters there. Nobody dares to go in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you.